Um, so we're actually in a, in a marine park, and that, to me, um, really proves our sustainability cre credentials. You are not going to end up having an aquaculture business in a marine park if you cannot prove to the authorities that you're actually clean, green, sustainable, and, and, and do what you mean. So basically, we build artificial reefs. Um, we identify there's a high demand for abalone. Um, we're still getting really good prices in the export market. Um, over 120 US a kilo was our average price last year. Um, this year's coming prices are up again, so the demand is, is going through the roof. So we're pretty happy there. Um, the main thing was that when I was an abalone diver, there's lots of areas out there where I'd be searching for abalone, towing around behind the boat, looking for a rock to pop up. So everything was right, the, um, the depth was right, the sand, sand, right amount of sand was there, the right amount of seaweed was there. The only thing missing was the rocks. So then we started putting two and two together and decided, well, let's put some rocks down there, put some maps on there and see what happens. Um, it was a bit more scientific than that, um, but it worked. So we started developing uh, these structures. Um, and we decided to term that, uh, abal that reef uh, the habitat, which is a play on words between abalone and habitat. So we've trademarked that as well. Um, we've placed them into strings much as what I see in the wild. So this, an, an habitat is a single unit which grows around 20 kilos of abalone a year for harvest. Um, but I'll make strings over a kilometre long, so just big long lines facing southwest where the food just drifts, apart, drifts past and uh, the abalone catch the seaweed. They don't actually move, they just wait for the seaweed to come to them. They're much like an oyster in that regard. Um, so obviously they've got to be in an area where abalone would grow naturally. So um, you actually have to identify those areas where the only thing missing is the habitat. And then once you identify that, you've got a pretty good chance of growing abalone on a rock. Uh, so the surrounding substrate is typically sand and seagrass. Um, this is the great part about our business. There's no feed inputs. It's just relying on what nature provides. Uh, we have a great relationship with a hatchery in Bremer Bay where we purchase our seed stock from. Uh, between 40 and 50 millimetres is the, the best size to get them at for survival. We expect around 50% of the abalone that we seed onto our reefs at 40 to 50 millimetres to survive the two to three years through to harvest. Uh, each habitat has a surface area of 10 metres and supports a harvest rate around two, kilog two kilograms per metre squared. Um, the reefs are quite deep, um, 15 to 20 metres of water, so we have some uh, pretty cool dive technology on mixed gases with the nitrox, and we only rely we use commercial divers. Uh, by the end of this year, we'll have 15 full-time divers, four full-time boats servicing our reefs. Uh, it started out as an R&D project, which I used to do on my spare time as an abalone diver. I had lots of time off, so I was always going out there and tending the little crop I had, the little trial I had going. Um, we self-funded through begging, borrowing and stealing money off uh, friends and family to um, complete the R&D. In that time, we've also completed two R uh, FRDC-funded R&D projects, so thanks to FRDC for helping us in those early days. Um, we have one main aquaculture lease at the moment in Flinders Bay, totaling 413 hectares. It's a big area. It's three kilometres long by 1.5 kilometres wide, so it's, it's a big area. Um, the reefs that we've put out there now, um, it takes me three days to swim them. It's 12 kilometres long if you put these blocks side by side, and we're doubling that to make it 25 kilometres long. And if you've actually peeled the surface area out and made it a metre high, it's 60 kilometres long. So. That gives you an idea of scale that you need to make a business of this size commercial. Um, we've hit, hit a number of milestones. We've been very successful in raising capital and selling this idea, and, and that's been backed up by um, completing project on time, on budget, and also um, um, meeting those harvest targets. So in 2014, we attracted 7.5 million in private investment, and that was the early stage. That, that really was friends and family. Uh, just recently, I've raised another six million seed capital to expand the business to double the size of the uh, farm in Augusta. And later this year, look out folks, uh, it's coming to you soon, uh, an IPO. We are planning to list uh, OGI on the stock market and really take this business to the next level where it needs to go because there's a number of sites on the south coast of uh, Western Australia, South Australia and potentially other areas that are suitable for abalone ranching. Uh, I believe there's only a few of those sites, so we look at, at getting in and being those early adopters of those sites and taking advantage of that. Uh, so we also have some IP that we've developed along the way. Um, 
regarding how we do things out there. And that's the great thing about our business is it's starting from scratch. And the team we've developed around me, they're really uh, innovative young guys. They're always out there. You're asking them, how do we do this better? Because no one's ever done what we've done before. So innovation is at our core every day. Um, there's very few places you can do abalone ranching on the south coast and Augustus, fortunately I, was, um, I grew up there and it's an ideal location because you need to be close to a port. You've got lots of concrete blocks, you've got to get out there quickly, you need to service them daily. So there's no point being in a beautiful location 50 mile away from any, any um, place. And there's lots of areas in the south coast of uh, uh, southern Australia that might be okay for abalone ranching, except they don't have a marina nearby. And you also have to have a ready supply of um, juveniles. We actually have to book two years ahead to get our stock. So sort of juggling our um, expansion is, is difficult because they need to breed those abalone to about 18 months to two years old before we can get them. So you have to do a deal with them to get um, those, the number of abalone you need early. And you need large areas of suitable habitat. And fortunately in Western Australia, where we are, we're quite close to the Asian markets. So Going in live is going to be a, a really um, interesting step for us going forward as far as price goes. So here we are showing the habitats underwater. So the guys there are, are harvesting. You can see how it's, it really is an oceanic environment. There's lots of food moving around. Uh, we can sort of work that area to about three metres as well and then things get tricky. You can't hang on. Um, but that's when the abalone come into their own and they really love the food that's coming past and they get fresh food when the swell's there. Um, it's not like abalone farming on land where you have to be there all the time. You have pumps to maintain and there's, you're always worried about, there's always someone on the farm. I actually knock our guys off for three weeks over Christmas and you don't even need anyone there to look after it. Um, harvesting's becoming, uh, is, is probably the best part of the job. We get down there, we can do around about a tonne and a half to two tonne a day, no problem underwater. Um, the guys get quicker at it as well. So you can see there we can grow some quite large abalone. This is our, this is our difference between uh, the abalone farms on land. They can generally only get them through to about 100 millimetres. Um, we have got the market cornered for greenlip abalone between 100 mil and 140 mil, which is the minimum legal length for wild catch. So we've got a wild catch product but of a size that we can put into the market at whatever size we like. And um, the early market trials we did, did with our harvest last year is very encouraging going forward. We've actually changed our harvesting technique now and um, just have lots of little bags of harvesting bags so we can actually put them into the uh, live pins live bins and just have like 10 kilos in a, in a bag and in a live bin and that way we don't have to double handle them. Uh, there's the team, so we have a small processing facility in Augusta uh, which we harvest or process abalone for the local wild catch guys. We also do a bit for the abalone farm in Bremer Bay and obviously our own. We had our maiden harvest in Q4 last year of 10 tonne on time, on budget with the right amount of abalone there. So. I was very um, reassured to have those predictions come, come, come to fruition. Um, 2017 is going to be a very good year. Someone said that this morning. But uh, you will be harvesting 40 tonnes this year going into the market starting in May. Um, we've already uh, pretty much sold what we've got to produce into Hong Kong. Uh, the big, the big abalone buyers in Hong Kong are really excited about our product and really excited about the marketing opportunities there as well. Um, it's going in as um, baby wild and uh, yeah, we're getting some really great feedback from the market. We're also going into, we're in a, in a pretty unique area, I don't know if anyone's been to Margaru, but it's a lovely spot. Um, there's great surf, there's good vineyards, there's good restaurants and Cape Lewin Lighthouse where the two oceans meet. Um, is visited by over 100,000 people a year and they have to drive past the marina twice. And we have a greenfield site there, so not only are we going to put processing in, but we're also going to build um, some tourism facilities around seafood and especially abalone um, to take advantage of the growing um, inboard Chinese and Japanese and Singaporean uh, tourist market that's coming down to the area. So we plan to have a cellar door for our business down there and um, show people 
showcase our, our business and, and the southwest down there. So you can see there, this is some early, early day concept plans of the building with the processing uh, on the concrete area and also the, the cellar door where we have a big aquarium and you know, it's just going to be uh, something quite nice to go to. So to sum up, they're the same quality as um, wild catch products. Um, I believe they're superior to the, to the aquaculture products. Some may debate that, but um, we are getting very good prices, um, same as wild catch. Um, we can grow a larger product than the wild catch, sorry, as, than the uh, aquaculture guys. So there's no feed inputs and there's no power bill, and that's two of our main advantages. Uh, we also have the aquaculture advantage. We're not limited by quota. We can grow our business. Um, abalone, fish, well, abalone fishing generally over the last 10 years is sort of slowly declining. Um, we're able to fill that void, we believe, and also grow the business. Um, we have an ability to harvest to fit uh, peak market demands. So therefore we have an ability to maximise our economic yield. It's a lovely product. Um, as far as a, as a sashimi style product goes, I believe there's not a, not a better abalone product in the market. It's um, of the right size. Um, it's got a great crisp texture and a beautiful ocean flavoured taste. And um, people that have had it straight off the back of the boat, everyone raves about it. The future, um, we believe we have a a model that's transferable to other locations, which is why we're, we're looking at expanding. We're at a point now where we need to expand um, to grow quickly to take advantage of opportunities that are arising. Uh, so our future projects, uh, we, we're increasing production in Augusta 200 tonnes per annum. So that's funded and, com and we've started doing that. We've actually started putting blocks in the water this week uh, for that second stage of the project. So there's another 5,000 habitats going in. Esperance in Wiley Bay, we have a partner down there who owns two abalone quotas and is uh, a family lifelong friend of ours. He's very excited about it, so we're going into Wiley Bay and Esperance. Um, the approval process there should be finished by around May. And Bremer Bay, we have a trial running there. And also in uh, Port Lincoln, um, I'm planning on running some trials there this year um, on a number of sites. And South Australia for us is, uh, could be the El Dorado, I believe. There's a lot of suitable area down there, it's got the right infrastructure, it's got the right aquaculture businesses already existing to uh, enable uh, rapid expansion of the industry. There's already a couple of hatcheries there as well, so um, really excited about the future. Um, there's also a sideline there, some early discussions with uh, my family and uh, other divers in the area that OGA has the potential to be a nursery system, so we can quite easily grow these abalone to 100 millimetre on our reefs in 18 months to two years and to transfer those abalone onto nearby denuded reefs. So the idea would be to have maybe 100 blocks near an area and then grow them to the 100 mil because it's quite easy to put them on our reefs, it's quite controlled, and then rehabilitate uh, local commercial abalone reefs in the future. So there's synergies between, you know, we're, we're crossing all borders here. We've got the, um, the aquaculture, the ranching, uh, right across to the wild catch, and we hope to participate in all areas in the future. Uh, yeah, so uh, tourism's another area that we plan to go into. So it's always good to have more than one string to your bow in, a, in any business, it's diversification is important. And as far as tourism goes, and also the marketing of our business, we plan to uh, have Augusta to Abalone as broomers to the Pearl. So when tourists or, or anyone in Australia or anyone in the world thinks about Abalone, they think about Augusta. Thank you very much.